connecting. Says I'm <clears throat> it's going to be the most boring live stream ever. The Airy Z5 should be fine if you're poor and you want small studio monitors. I, I, I haven't owned studio monitors in a long time, so I honestly I don't know, but it measures okay. Like you could do a lot. Like I owned um, some Mackie something that are like the equivalent to that. And those measure really, really bad and sound really, really bad. So the Aries Z5 should at least sound like a, a decent speaker. Because the Mackies measured so god... Like, it literally made my ears bleed. There's, there's audio equipment out there that measures extremely bad and sounds extremely bad. And when you look at it compared to the Aries Z5 measurement... The areas should actually sound decent. Like they, they may not be the best or they could have little problems, but at least when you listen to it, your ears technically should not be bleeding. So Mackie's were just, a, that I had were, they measured so much worse and they sounded so goddamn bad. Adam T7V. I don't remember. I've, I'm sure I've looked at those before. Adam has some really crappy budget stuff. <coughs> like the... A long time ago, Adam Audio was handing out some of their budget speakers to a bunch of reviewers and... They had some, yeah, yeah. Oh, the T seven, yeah, the T seven V. Like they have a dip at five K that looks really bad. That's the the main problem with Adam speakers is they usually have like one or two really bad dips, and it could be like again like they have a woofer and a tweeter and they have to blend it together, and typically where those two spots blend together, there's like if the speaker isn't done right, there's like a huge cut or peak usually like a huge cut and like you can actually see like where the woofer and the tweeter take over but like yeah there's like a five kilohertz cut on that that looks pretty damn bad Th those those are thin in the front yeah that, i mean like that five kilohertz cut alone would make me not want to get it But I, I don't like talking about speakers. 
but but you can tell overall like the the t7v like they they scoop out the fundamentals below 1k they go back up for a base boost below 200 hertz which looks pretty extreme to be honest It's definitely not flat, but again, flat is, you're not supposed to be trying to get flat. You're supposed to shape the sound to sound good. And just looking at that measurement, like, I, I mean, I, like above 8K, it kind of is pulled down a little bit. So it's kind of shouty from like 6 to 8K, and then it scoops out everything above that a bit. Like, I just see a lot of problems, and like, I'm sure a lot of that is audible, so the end result is quite a bit of coloration problems. So, yeah, that, that that's what I typically see with Atom Audio. Like, they have huge cuts. Like, they, they just have problems throughout the response. Like, they try to shape it to sound good, but it like it has these cuts and stuff that ruin it. And it's kind of shaped a little bit wrong, even though you can see what they were trying to do. So yeah, the, like that's what I've seen other people say too. Is the Adam Audio is like you know they try to make it sound good, but it still has tonality problems. So you're you're, you're kind of screwed. The treble is really good. All the, what do I think about this sign? The HD uh, 560. All pr, pr, if you if you I, it's it's funny that I deleted all the videos, but I made a video showing that all the Sennheisers, the 500 and 600 series, are all the same headphone. They're all the same damn headphone. They all they're all they all have a peak at 5k. They all scoop out the treble. They're all very weak at bass boosting. So this there's the Sennheiser Veil in the entire 500 600 series. They they almost look identical. Like there's subtle subtle differences, but the tonality from all of the Sennheiser 500 600 series are the same driver. It's the same damn driver. They they literally use the same driver in all of their headphones. And you got these people like, ooh, the 650, that's the prestigious one. Oh, the 600, no, that's the more prestigious one. Oh, you know, the, five, six, the 500 series, oh, that's the budget one. When they all measure almost identically. I oh, tell you're so stupid. I remember looking at the KRK Rocket Studio monitors. Those seem to be those the I like I noticed that typically they roll off the highs. Like those are kind of those are kind of like those stupid uh things that uh, like the Edimotic or the X curve crap or e even like the the Sennheiser Val like Basically, what I'm trying to say is the KRK rocket stuff I've seen is typically like they roll off the highs. I don't know if they still do that, but it's just something like I noticed when I looked at them a long time ago that they they roll off the damn highs, and I hated that, so I stopped looking at the KRK stuff. I don't know what they're doing these days. I, I haven't looked at their stuff in like a couple of years. But the, all the KRK rocket crap seemed, when I looked at them, they rolled off the highs. And that's unacceptable to me. So. And they have tonality problems. I don't know. That just seems like a stupid brand. I, I heard they also have a lot of noise, self-noise problems. I don't know. Again, I don't like talking about studio monitors because I don't really buy them. But...
Terror case sounds like you're underwater. I was looking at that X curve crap because Schroer is obsessed with uh, like above 200 hertz it rolling off the highs. Like he thinks that's how it's supposed to be. And that's the X curve that they use uh, in movie theaters. Apparently like in a huge, like it has to be like a, a thousand seat theater and shit like that. Like a lot of theaters, especially like in the 70s or something, were highly reflective and stuff. So they, they created the X curve where they roll off everything above 200 hertz by a couple of dBs. And sure got obsessed with that because he's a movie. Like, I, I really like it's kind of funny. You have to realize where people come from in the audio world. And sure is he literally wants his IEMs or his headphones to sound like you're in a movie theater. See, I want my headphones to sound dynamic and fun and clear, to sound natural, like real life, and to, to actually sound ex exciting and fun. And, uh, you know, that's the target sound I look for. And he's looking for a goddamn movie theater. Like, like I, I kept I kept wondering, like, like if you look at his Discord, it, it has like a fucking IMAX theater and shit. And he started talking more and more about like movies and, and music in movies. And then he started talking about uh, displays. You know, he, he like again, yeah, OLED displays do look amazing. But like he wants it to have like perfect blacks in a dark room. So he, he is base. you have to realize that like, he's trying to recreate a goddamn movie theater. And I'm trying to look for, you know, exciting, fun uh, headphones that are for critical listening and like the X curve I don't I, I haven't been to a movie theater in a long time but the X curve and I I know what that does to the sound of headphones if you do that it rolls off the goddamn highs and you can see complaints that the X curve gets rid of intelligibility and stuff because it rolls off everything above f two kilohertz so five, six, seven, eight kilohertz where all the articulation is and stuff, it's all scooped out in the treble. So people, you can, like, if you look up X, X curve, you can find all these, this literature of people saying that it ruins, that it ruins, uh, you know, intelligibility and stuff. So... I have to read this. I just donated a thousand dollars. Did you? I have. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to Best Buy and uh, buy an iPad um, Pro 11 and a Mac. Uh, apparently, the MacBook 14 inch that's only a two thousand dollars. It runs a little bit cooler than the two thousand five hundred dollar one. So, yeah, I'm thinking that I I may buy a MacBook. 14 inch like eight core uh laptop because the the 10 core one appears to get a little bit hotter but it does have like 20 15 20 percent more performance so like i'm i'm, I'm kind of like obsessed with trying to get like a silent computer and those macbooks it seems like the more processing power that you put in an apple computer the louder, like if you look at the Mac Studio that recently came out, like I have this volume way up too much. If you look at the the Mac Studio, it 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 has an extremely high self noise, so it's 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 basically as noisy as my current computer. And uh, so you you actually the the more processing power you get on a Apple computer, the the hotter it's going to be. The fans are going to have to run constantly. So if you get like a Mac Mini, or like an you know a, a, a MacBook Air, or even like a MacBook Pro with like lower performance, it should run cooler. But like the you get to a point where the processing performance just makes it 
too hot, and then you have to hear the fan noise all day. Are my DT990 Pro 250-ohm worn pad still toilet paper modded? No. No, they're not. I think only the first couple of weeks, or less. Like, I, I noticed when I put the toilet paper under the pads that within, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, it compressed the pads. So when you put that much pressure under the pads with to toilet paper, you may only have to do the toilet paper mod for like 30 minutes and then take the toilet paper out, and then it's not going to sound shrill anymore. So you really don't... that th th Again, that's all you're trying to do with the toilet paper mod is compress the pads, and it literally will compress the pads within 30 minutes if you put toilet paper under it so yeah like like see the see if so many people are obsessed with like uh like I, I'm kind of OCD about like if if like I buy a MacBook and an iPad, I kind of want them to have that. Like the MacBook can only have a 60 hertz display, and the biggest like 12, 13 inch iPad Pro has like a 120 hertz display. So that would kind of mess with my OCD if like the iPad has like 120 hertz and then the MacBook Pro has 60 hertz. Like 60 hertz, like, so again, none of them have OLED, you know, they're all IPS panels. So the iPad Pro 11 inch and the MacBook Pro, you know, 8 or 10 core, they have the same display pretty much. But once you get the 12, 13 inch iPad Pro, then it has 120 hertz and XDR and all this crap. And then it, it's it's actually, I guess you could say, better than the MacBook Pro display a little bit. So that would screw with my OCD. So I kind of want it to all be uniformly crappy. So, yeah, I'm going to go to Best Buy probably. I, I'm, I'm probably not going to get the keyboard with the iPad. But I do want, like, I, I may get, like, a, like, see, you know, my phone has a, a cover on it. Um, see, cause, cause I'm going to be using the iPad for mainly drawing, not typing. So I kind of want just like a, a cover for it, but the keyboard kind of gets in the way. Like if you want to draw on the iPad, you have to take it off the keyboard. So the keyboard's kind of like just in the way. So yeah, I, I'm probably just going to get a cover for it or, uh, like a, like kind of like how my phone has this cover. And take off so like you can still lay it, it just protects the edges from it dropping like that's mainly all I want I just don't want to drop it and then dent it so like all I want is just like a cover I have to move well if I move this over here I can actually read it they both have 120 minutes oh oh they do both iPads have 120 inch. The Pros. I, I was I make it the iPad Air then. I've seen complaints that the iPad Air like it it bends, like the the metal is too thin on it. So that kind of made me want to get the iPad Pro. There's so many things you have to think about at the like. So like I saw people saying that if you press on the back of the iPad Air fifth uh, generation or whatever that like you, you can actually see the deformation on the screen on the other side so it's I, I don't know if the iPad Pro is a little bit stronger from bending I, I was going to order the, the MacBook and the iPad from Apple.com but I realized I could just go to Best Buy that's easier for me
but I could order it. But then they want like nine dollars shipping. Not that I care. It's just I could easily go to Best Buy. Yeah, you, you don't really need the M1 chip on the iPad. It, it's just when I realized I'm getting a MacBook Pro, my OCD kicked in, and I wanted like um, an iPad Pro with it. Like the the more that I thought about it, the more that like I kind of wanted it to be uniform, like to to have the same design as the MacBook Pro, the iPad Pro, and stuff. So now I have to look at the so the iPad Pro 11 inch has 100 like i I'm, i actually am mad about that i don't want it to have 120 hertz because then that means it's gonna be a bit different than the ipad the macbook pro that's disappointing i want it to be crappier so then i guess i gotta get the ipad air Yeah, the display, 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 display. Liquid Retina display. Oh yeah, it has what's that called? The da, 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 da. Pro Motion technology. That's the 120 hertz Pro. Yeah, they both have Pro Motion technology. God damn it! God, I'm actually mad that it has Pro Motion. It's funny. So yeah, then the iPad Air would actually see see this is good. But then I have to get like the silver one, space gray. So then I have to get a a, a Mac book that that's I was thinking about getting the silver one, but they don't have a iPad Air that's not space gr that's that's silver. So iPad Air. So the iPad Air is 599. The iPad Pro is seven hundred ninety nine. Five, six, seven. You save two hundred dollars. But then it doesn't have Pro in the name. Then it doesn't have Pro. So yeah, so I guess maybe I'll get the iPad Air instead. After all, I'm literally getting the iPad Air because it, it has it, it, but then it's not pro. But then again, like I have to get the Space Gray MacBook Pro. Space Gray MacBook Pro. I, I kind of, I kind of like the silver one because it matches my microphone. Like my microphone is silver, it's not space gray. I'm not even reading the comments because I'm, I'm I'm I got the tunnel vision. I, like I've looked at the space gray and the, the, the white the silver one just looks I'm not saying I don't know, space gray looks outdated. That's what it looks like. It looks outdated. Well, after after five o'clock, yeah, they uh, they don't deliver the same day anymore at Apple dot com. I guess they're closing soon. So I I may get the like again. I don't want to overkill it. The ten core CPU MacBook. It 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 the fan noise is louder because it gets hotter. The eight core runs up a little bit quieter because again, the more computing you you eventually get to the computing power where the fan is like turning on all the time. It's kind of like a desktop PC, like the Max. Like I was thinking about getting the Max Studio, but the fans never turn off, and it's just it it sounds like a desktop PC. And the MacBook Pros that they don't have the fan running all the time. And it, it's only really, you only really get a, a big benefit with the higher end MacBooks if you're, when you're actually like rendering and, 
and shit. But the fans turn on more. The fans are louder more. The 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 more powerful the the laptop is. So again, the 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 MacBook Air has no fan. So again, like if you want it to be quiet, like it's a you know it's performance to sound. So they they have the 13 inch MacBooks. Those are outdated. They have the the touch bar. So the yeah the 13 inch ones are outdated. I I've looked at that one. And that only has the eight core. But that's cheap. That's cheap. That's one thousand three hundred dollars. See, I think a lot of people are probably still getting the thirteen inch. That's cheap. Touch bar. See, I I could actually get the cost down a lot and still probably be satisfied with it. Like eight core CPU GPU, only one thousand three hundred dollars. And then you go to the 14 inch and it's what the the 14 inch is still only eight core. It it just has a, a 14 core GPU PU. That's the main difference. And 16 gigs of RAM versus uh eight. So yeah, you you don't want to get it too shitty. Depends on what you want to use it for. I mean, that's a pretty big jump in price. I was looking at a $2,500 MacBook. Or you could get a $1,300 MacBook. That's over $1,000 less. It really depends on how much computing power... Four USB four ports. See, it's good that I did. I didn't just like buy this shit now. But I, I mean, I, I dabbled with this one. See, see again. You don't have to buy the top of the line shit. I don't know if that. But, but if I get that, maybe it's going to be underpowered. Again, I, I don't want it to be so goddamn powerful that I'm never going to really take advantage of it. But I also don't want it to struggle. You could, like, I could literally only, only spend half as much as I was planning if I get the iPad Air and the smaller inch MacBook Pro. The, the the normal iPad is only three hundred and twenty nine dollars, but the the iPad Pro is only seven hundred ninety nine. That's I've been looking so much at Apple products that are in the thousands of dollars that the iPad Pro for seven ninety nine looks cheap as fuck. But you can get a normal iPad for three hundred and twenty nine dollars. And a normal, so it's it's funny how cheap you can actually get Apple computers. Like that's pretty goddamn cheap. That's crazy. It's so easy to just pay more and more and more. I was pl I was playing League of Legends a minute ago on my phone, my S twenty one Ultra. And that game is so brain dead. So again, like, I don't need an iPad to play games. I'm not even reading the comments. I don't give a shit. I could sit here all day trying to figure out what... If money isn't... I don't know. Again, the, 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 the MacBook 13 inch is outdated. 
Like that's the old design. So like if I got a MacBook 13 inch and a normal iPad, I could get a MacBook. Yeah, th a lot of people say that you might as well get a MacBook Air than a 13 inch MacBook Pro. So if you really don't, like again, like I could get a normal, I could get an iPad Air, since I have so much OCD, I could get a MacBook Air and an iPad Air. So the, the MacBook Air, God, they had the seven core GPU, just like the iMac. Ew, the, the, ew, it's, it's $1,250 for the eight core CPU MacBook Air. That's terrible. And it's only 256 gigs. I don't know how much the operating system eats up those gigs. Retina display with True Tone. So I could get a MacBook Air and an iPad Air. Now we're getting really ghetto. Five hundred ninety nine for the iPad here, that's crazy. So I could get a normal iPad. The, the normal iPad doesn't have an M1 chip though. So So I, so yeah, I could get an Air or a Pro. See now, see, see now I'm OCDing over, I could get a MacBook Air and an iPad Air. Or a MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro. And you end up paying a hell of a lot more, maybe. Scary faster. This is a bunch of bullshit. Watch the iPad Air and the MacBook Air be underpowered and I, I can't use it for shit. And then you, you lose out on the inputs and outputs, right? So iPad Air. People said that the iPad should lose the Air name. But as long as they have the MacBook Air for people with OCD. God damn, my OCD is taking over. Okay, I'm actually gonna read some shit. I would suggest the screen cover that's paper-like. Yeah, the paper-like cover for the iPad. I, I definitely favorited that so I can get one. Just so you know, the paper-like screen protectors make the colors look worse and more blurry. Again, uh... The, 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 the paper-like thing is for people that draw. It's not for people who, who want to watch movies and care about the display quality to begin with. Would you consider buying a super expensive headphone like, for example, the Focal Utopia to try it out and review it then just return it with... No. Like, like that that is funny that there's actually people out there that that care about the price of headphones and think that like there's going to be some extravagant quality jump. I I was I, I was watching a, a video on the Metal Jesus Rocks YouTube channel where he was talking to the the owner of uh Sierra, which was like a a game publisher. And it kind of really opens your eyes to like video games and stuff. 
Like if you if you look at video games from like the eyes of a publisher uh, you, you, uh, versus like somebody who's actually getting getting excited for that particular video game, it really makes you think. So like the publisher of a video game, like they look at it from a different perspective. They look at the game studio as like, you know, this ragtag group of people trying to make a game on a game engine. And then you got the consumers who are looking at the game as like this magical thing that they're going to waste their time in caring about like some stupid story in the game and the, ooh, you know, and then like, if you look at it from a publisher perspective, it's like, just like this, this shit game engine and they're trying to produce this shit little product and release it. And, and it's, it's so funny to see the comparison between a consumer and a publisher of the same product. How people get so excited over the consumer product, but from a publisher point of view, they see it as just like this crappy product that they're trying to get out the door. And I, I you can use that for like when you're buying like a MacBook or an iPad, you know, people getting so excited. Oh, the display is a little bit better. Oh, you know, this this the marketing. And then you look at it from somebody who's producing it, like the, you know, they're probably doing all this corner cutting, cutting prices down. They know just how mediocre it is, and they just throw in, throw these buzzwords on. Like the the new Mac Studio is loud as fuck. It's not any better than a MacBook Pro. For and 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 people are eating it up. Some people are, high, and it's just a, a little shit, crappy computer in a box that has a crappy GPU. You know, that has a high self noise on the fans. That's not any better than a damn MacBook Pro for the same price. And people just get all hyped up about it like it's something special. And, and just Apple in general, people getting excited over it. And you look at their products and they're, they're so bad, most of them. And they, they gimp you so bad. And people just look at it like, it, it, like if you if you were like working for Apple or like you were like the and you were coming up with the designs and you realize like the IEMs that that they have the headphones that Apple has they 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 sound terrible their products the iMac is a fucking joke it's like the the new iPad the the new iMac whatever 24 inch or whatever the hell that is is crappier than the predecessor iMac that came out a few years ago it's and it's, it's got these gay colors and you know there's people eating it up and you know it's so funny so funny so yeah like i encourage you guys to see products as like if you were the publisher if you were the owner of the company and really just kind of look at it from that and watch interviews of people who actually own these companies and you'll see just how crappy these products actually are. And, and the people who get hyped up about it, it's fucking sad. Go refurbish. You got I, uh, Yeah, the M1 Mac Mini has 16 gigs of RAM for $500 refurbish. That sounds amazing. Like, you know, you know what's funny? Is for some reason, I don't want a Mac Mini. Like that, 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 that would probably be just as good. And I would use it the same exact way that like, I would use it like a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro. But for some reason, I don't want the Mac mini. And I legitimately, if like, if I had a MacBook Pro, my plan is to connect it to my display and use it like a desktop PC. Like I don't plan on taking it anywhere. I don't even like the keyboard. I don't like I experimented with a bunch of different MacBooks over the past few days. And there's a lot of things I don't like about it. Like I like desktop PCs much better than a damn MacBook. So like uh, the only like it's so funny like I want uh, like I the, the only reason why I want a MacBook is because it's quiet and um you know, because I want an iPad. <laughs> and I want it to go along with it in the ecosystem. The, the more I think about this, the, the more I don't want to think about this because then it, it, it completely talks me out of wanting to get the majority of this shit. 
I'm like, what the fuck am I wasting my time and money on this for? But like, Final Cut Pro. Yeah, I don't think I should get like an like an iMac or a a MacBook Air because that that's that's too gimped. That's too gimped. I think I should stay in the pros. Cuz again, since I do render a lot of videos and stuff and I do sometimes want to have power I mean, again, you can you can do that right with the MacBook Air. You can render your basic ass videos. Like, and again, if you don't game, but I can, can you even connect a MacBook Air to a, a display? See, see, if I can't connect a MacBook Air to a display, then that's stupid. I don't think you can. I don't think you can connect a MacBook Air to a display. It's got what USB ports on it, and that's it. See, so you see, then I have to go up to the Pro. Display. 400 nit display on the Air. Yeah, yeah, th it has a headphone jack and two USB ports. Like, you can't even connect that to a display. I can't get the MacBook Air. I can't, the MacBook Air is too, too gimped. See, th there goes the whole Air thing. So now my OCD is back on the Pros. You don't want to, and then you got the the Pro 13. Uh, that, again, that's the reason why people maybe the Pro the the MacBook Pro 13, which people say you might as well get the the Air, but maybe on the Pro 13, it actually has inputs and outputs. No. The Pro 13 only has what two USB ports and a headphone jack again. What a piece of crap. So then you have to get the 14 inch if you want to be able to connect it, right? So now I'm back up to the 14 inch. Because then you get the. Okay. 14 inch. No, 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 no. And then you get the Liquid Retina XDR display. Ooh, XDR. See, it has XDR. And that's what the biggest iPad has, XDR. Right? So the smaller, the smaller one? Motherfucker. If I want this all uniform... LED backlit multi-touch IPS display liquid retina no XDR on the on the air iPad air okay so now I'm back to the pro in the pro liquid retina no the the XDR is only on the the 12.9 inch so now the MacBook Pro is not going to have the same display as the iPad Pro if I get the 11 inch. And if you get the 12 inch, so so maybe my OCD can be okay with 120 hertz on an iPad and 60 hertz on a display and a computer. And then they both have the XDR. 12.9 inch motherfucking display. That thing is huge. I, I demoed the iPad Pro 12.9 the other day. It's It's huge. It's a... And I gotta admit the 10 inch iPad is kind of small, but God damn, this is a bitch. But if you look at the MacBook Pro, it still has like backlight bleed like a motherfucker. Cause it's still IPS. So yeah, I have to get the 14 inch MacBook Pro to get the the output for the HDMI. Right. Media engine. God damn, this is a bitch. MagSafe headphone jack Thunderbolt 4. Wait a minute, the Thunderbolt 4 is the 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 fucking 
the way that it has a, a, a display out, right? This is some bullshit. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I should probably read what people are writing in the chat. The hell is on the MacBook? 13 inch. Thunderbolt 4. They both have Thunderbolt 4. This is some bullshit. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Do you think Razer laptops are overpriced compared to Apple? I had a gaming laptop that I spent like $2,500 on like a decade or plus ago. And it went bad after like a year and I couldn't even use it for gaming anymore. It just started overheating like a motherfucker and melting. I wouldn't get a Razer laptop. I've seen people make jokes about it. Again, I really don't have much of a reason to get an Apple laptop. The only benefit that I would have to get an Apple laptop is the, the, the Apple operating system and the silentness of it. So if I had a Razer laptop, I would just have Windows again. And that takes off a big reason why I'm trying to get it to begin with. Because I'm trying to get into the Apple ecosystem. If you went full Apple, why don't you get an iPhone as well? See, yep, you go. You, the i the iPhone has. If you get the expensive iPhone, it's OLED. So. Why are you so? I waste my money on audio gear. Don't need to fill the empty void in my life. When that isn't enough, I distract myself with video games. Send me help. Yeah, I don't. I don't like video games anymore. I can't. I uh, like. Uh, again, like I like I play Apex Legends lately. Like that was the game that I was playing, and I like I. It, it's it's just a. It's not fun. Bought a TL-103 because of your recommendation. Best mic I've owned and heard. Thank you. You know, the the one thing I hate is when people say shit like that. Like, I bought this equipment because of you and I love it. Like, I can see people hanging out in Shurer's community where they go, I bought the ER2SE thanks to you. And they're like the best IEMs ever. And, uh, yeah, it's sad. <laughs> so, like, so, so, like, when I see people say, like, I bought the DT990 or the Tail 103 because of you, like, uh, like, I kind of roll my eyes at that. Cause you don't, like, you don't know if that person is, like, super true to themselves about it or if, like, I don't know, like, if, like, if I bought, maybe, I don't know. Basically, I've seen people buy really crappy equipment and say, oh, you know, I love it. You know, thanks for recommending it. Like, I see that on other people's review channel. Like, I bought the Sennheiser HD600s and I love it. Like, you can find people who recommend the HD600 650 and then they get it and they say they love it. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, when I bought the HD650s, there were a bunch of people who said they love it. Uh, I don't know. I, like I, I just basically I'm saying that people can say they love it. That, that like that's the reason why I don't review other products anymore. I just say my favorite products, and I I only talk about what I use now. Because I realize now, like again, if I sit there and review all the different measurements for all these different headphones and stuff, there's still going to be people who say measurements don't matter. 
and the products that I say measure bad, there's still going to be people who say they love that crap. So at the end of the day, if, if, you, if you make a YouTube channel where you're ta constantly talking about all these different products and talking about the measurements, you're going to get people who do not agree with you who say those products are made. Like if you go on Shure's YouTube channel where he's talking about all these different headphones and IEMs, you can see people in his comment section, in his community, saying that the ER2SE are not that good. And like the ER3SE are better or the ER4XR are better or whatever. You can see people saying that they love all this different equipment that he's reviewing and saying sucks. And it, it, like, so see, see, what's my review on persona, persona stuff? See, that's, see, again, that's the reason why I don't review products I don't care about anymore. Because then I get questions like, what, what's my opinion on all this crap? That's the reason why I got rid of all those measurements. for. So again, like I'm trying to be much more efficient. Like I've already looked at all the microphones, all the headphones, the majority of studio monitors. And, you know, it's just this huge clusterfuck of, of crap when you can consolidate it down to what what I actually use, what I actually like. Again, I could talk about every single microphone on the market that I don't fucking like. That's a total waste of time. I could talk about all these different headphones that I don't give a shit about. Or I could just talk about the, the headphone that I actually use that I actually like. I want to buy the HG600. It's my end game. That is... It's not some serious troll. The, I, I'll say that, the, the, you know, again, I said a minute ago that all the Sennheiser headphones sound the same. They almost all sound the same. Like, they, they, they have the same overall tone. They all have the Sennheiser Veil. They all have a 5 kilohertz peak. They're all pretty weak. Like, they're not super bass boosted. So, no matter what Sennheiser you get, it's going to sound veiled. It's going to have a 5K peak. But, like, the HD600, that's grainy. That has some grainy-ass fucking treble. And the 5 kilohertz peak is much more piercing. If you get the Sennheiser HD650s, they don't have any grain in the treble. The 5 kilohertz peak is less sharp and fatiguing. It's there, but it's kind of blunted. So the HD650s are darker. They don't have any grain. And the 5 kilohertz peak is less sharp. But people say that over time when the pads wear down, they start to sound even more alike. So when the pads wear down on the HD600s, they get darker. The, gr the grain goes away. The 5 kilohertz peak gets duller. So depending on how much pad wear you have, the HD600s actually start to sound just like the HD650s. So that's the reason why so many people, like DMS, who, gl who used to love the HD600 series, he'll even say that they're basically the same. And that's because if you use them enough, they end up sounding almost identical. The, the 650s are always going to be a little bit darker because they're out of the box more dampened. But they but the 600s start to get darker too. And at that point, they literally sound pretty much identical. So, but yeah, I mean, the, the HD600s are fucking terrible. And if that's your end game, that's sad. Because you're going to, you're li if you, you're literally going to have a 5K peak and in a in a veiled treble, and they're just shouty and veiled and crappy, and that's sad. It, it's so funny how people are like, oh, the HD six hundreds are so flat. Like that is so simple. That is like stage one of learning about headphones. Like it has so it has so like it, you could have something that measures kind of flat. But it has so many tonality problems throughout the response that it's just, it, it, it's so funny. It's so funny. There, there's so many people out there who say, oh, I'm going to get the HD 600s. That's my end game. And like, it, like, you have to realize that it's like all fucked up throughout the entire response above 1K. It's, it's shouty. It's veil. Again, there's, there's four main regions of a headphone the bass, the low mids, the high mids, and the treble. 
or you could say like the bass, the the fundamentals, you know, the high mid treble, or you know, some people say low treble, high treble. It doesn't really matter. There's four main regions, and on the HD 600s, they lack bass. The fundamentals are a bit warm. The high mids are shouty and piercing. The 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 treble is veiled. So again, like I mean, is that flat, weak bass, warm, shouty, veiled? Does that sound flat? It's so funny. I've listened to a lot of headphones. Nothing comes close to to it. Grainy treble, and fun doesn't bother me. Only the three K shout. You know what's so funny is people talk about the three K shout on the HD six hundreds. The you know from one to five K it's just prominent. the whole, The whole region is too prominent there. Like the three K is like a little bump, and then there's a huge peak at five K. And like people talk about like the three K shout like the three K is the reason why it's shouty. Again, like if you if you look at some of the worn pad measurements, apparently five kilohertz collapses completely. And then yeah, I mean if you have worn pads apparently from the that measurement, that worn pad measurement by critical, uh, you know, everything above three kilohertz completely collapses. And then you have that little three K prominent spot. So that makes that that makes sense to me. But like in order to get there apparently you have to use them till the pads wear down, which is something I couldn't even fucking tolerate. Like I couldn't withstand that. So I guess maybe that's true. 3K is the only problem spot after they burn in. Maybe that's true. So, yeah. That's probably true, honestly. I like close and intimate vocals. Only the HD 600 can give me this. There is literally not another option for me. I again, that's a gimmick. Like it's so, it, the HD 600s are so badly tuned that they don't have a wide sound stage. So, yeah, vo so so again, it sounds intimate. But in order to sound intimate, the treble is scooped out. So it, it's just it's 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 a it's a it's a cool effect of a horrible badly tuned headphone. It, it's so funny when you realize that the HD six hundreds have intimate vocals because they are that badly tuned that they don't have a sound stage. Like if you have a correctly tuned headphone, vocals are going to sound a little bit distant because you have a sound stage. And it, it, so uh, that. From all of my research, that's the correct way it's supposed to sound. Soundstage is supposed to, to be there. Vocals are supposed to not sound intimate. Because again, in the real world, vocals don't sound fucking intimate. So, thoughts on the HD 560s again. I've tried them for a few months now and been enjoying them. Oh, that's sad. Only complaint is that certain tracks the treble gets a little spicy. They, they have a huge 5k peak in a treble veil. They're terrible. They're fucking terrible. Oh, it's Ugly Nacho too. Oh. See, again, that's the reason why I don't like talking about Headphone uh, again. If I don't, I like again. That's my new philosophy. I don't like talking about audio equipment that I don't like. Because again, he likes the HD 560s. He likes them. So many people like the Sennheiser headphones. So it's better that I just don't talk about them at all. Because I'm I'm gonna say they're shit. But there's people running around who actually like that shit. So. You know, might as well have somebody else review that crap who actually likes it rather than me reviewing it and saying it's dog shit. So, like, if you, if you don't like the DT990s but you like the 560... Uh, you know, I saw somebody, um, the Mouse Lady uh, YouTube channel, she had the DT990s probably because of me, and, and she got rid of them for the 560S. She bought the 560S. 
and she decided she liked them more than the DT-990s. And that was a little bit depressing when I saw that. But, you know, it is what it is. If they like it better than whatever. Why do Autofiles prefer the DT-880s over the buyers? Not true. The, D, the, the DT-880s are supposed to be like the more sophisticated biodynamic headphone. You know, they, they have linear analytical cold base, whatever you want to call that. They don't, they don't have a treble extension. So they're, they're supposed to be kind of like the flat, quote, quote, buyer headphone. And the DT-990s are supposed to be like the fun V-shaped. So the people who like the DT-880 or a lot of times think they're more sophisticated, that they like the more flat, accurate, quote, quote, sound. But those headphones have a huge 6K peak. The, they, they actually thin out over time and they get ridiculously thin in the bass. And then the, the treble sounds veiled. So, you know, they don't have the sparkle. They have 6K peak. They don't have any bass dynamics. So, again, DT-990s are like dynamic. And then the DT-880s are supposed to be like less dynamic more linear less fun so and so so i mean you can see people leave comments on forums and shit about that like uh you know but that, that's the way it is i think soundstage is a meme on headphones you, you get the fuck out of here go go back to sure go back to sure i have demo dt990s and they sound normal to me too no the dt990s have very distant vocals they, they sound over uh, like when I got the DT 990s, they sound overly wide. Like I, it took me a long time to actually get used to the DT 990s because the high mids are so, so scooped out that it was actually the, the width was actually too much. So again, some people, you know, they can't, they, they can't hear certain things. They're tone deaf. They can't hear the sounds. They don't. They don't know what they're listening to, but the DT 990s have a, a, a vocals sound really fucking distant on the DT 990s. I was actually complaining about that that they sound too distant. Uh, so uh, you know, soundstage width, like how 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 big that scoop is supposed to be. Again, the HD 600 intimate vocals. See, that's a dumb fucking comment, Burton. HD 600s have extremely intimate vocals, and DT 990s have ab absurdly wide vocals. So, soundstage being a meme, like you dumb, dumbass, you fucking dumb. Holy shit! When you're getting a third, I thought about getting a third TL 103, a black one, or maybe an MKH 416. The the uh, the. I've tried getting the 416. It has self noise audible self noise of like 13 dBA and I think it sounds a little bit worse if you use it versus the TLM 103 like if, if you have it just off camera like that that's the only the only reason why I would get a, a 416 is is if like I wanted the microphone just off camera but you know I can actually achieve that effect by putting the TLM 103 below my camera so like I can actually hide the microphone pretty much completely if I want to so I, I in my situation I don't see the point to getting a shotgun microphone because I can I if I if I just position the camera and the microphone correctly um, I can get the the microphone completely out of the shot and it, it'll have lower self noise and I think sounds a little bit better than a shotgun mic so if I really wanted to put position my shit like flawlessly, like if I actually cared about that shit, which I don't, I think the TL-103 is a better, you can actually pull it off better with the TL-103. I think, I think mainly the shotgun mic is best for if you're standing up, like, I don't know, like it, it's just, it just, I don't think I would benefit from a, 416 at all and I think it would sound a little bit worse and I'd be like what's the point of having it 
I do have one question. As good as the DT ninety nine, am I am I doing anything wrong using a NX four to power them? Does the NX four disrupt the DT nine ninety sound signal? I've only looked at quite a few audio interfaces. I don't, I don't look at amps. I'm assuming the NX four is an amp. There's a lot of audio interfaces that have crappy microphone inputs, crappy outputs, crappy headphone jack. And the Motu M2 that I use has, it's, I think it's a lot better than the Focusrite stuff. But I don't know anything about dedicated amps, I'm, especially those weird brands. So I, I, again, I only use audio interfaces because I have a microphone to go along with my headphones. So an amp is just kind of stupid. If you want soundstage, HT800S has way more soundstage than DT990s. But the, the HT800S have a huge 6K peak, a huge 9K cut, and they don't have any bass. And they cost a lot. And it's more so. Uh, the Dina will wait what they do. You could do the toilet paper mod on the DT990s if you got them yesterday. Just to, to see how the treble shards are, change. I want it for a small booth, actually. Large diaphragm condensers don't sound as good. For small booths, TL-103 would sound better in a room or treated studio. I don't hate them cage 4 and 6. I just, when I consider all the variables, like if you listen to, there's a ton of shootouts between the TL-103 and the 416. And if you turn up your preamp a little bit, you can actually hear the self noise of the shotgun mic. And it, I, I just think the tone of it is a little bit worse than the TLM 103. So I don't see the point in, in me buying one personally. Like uh, uh, the self noise alone just. God, I can't remember I'm talking about microphones ahead. I have shit mod her, and DT900, DT99 Pro 80. So you have the 80 ohm one. See, so many people get the black pads or the 80 ohm. And I don't know if those are any good. But I've heard they probably don't sound the same. If the, if the 4 and 6 also, you probably don't have to worry about dust. Like if you put, if you if, if I had a 4 and 6, I would probably have the foam on it. And I wouldn't care if dust got on it or anything. So I would probably like I, I probably wouldn't even bother covering it up or anything. If I if I had the four one six, I would probably have it like on a boom, like right above me, just out of the shot, and I would probably never have to move it or anything. Well, that's maybe not true. A lot of people who have the four one six, they end up just putting it on camera in front of them. Like a lot a lot of people have the 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 shotgun mic on camera because it sounds better. Like the, the whole point of a shotgun microphone is to have it off camera, but the people who actually own it and, and make videos like I do, they end up putting it close to them and having it on camera because it actually sounds better close up too. So that that's what people who, who buy the MKH416 realize is it, it actually sounds better if you have it just as close as a side address condenser. So. Yeah, you, you could have it off camera, but it's going to sound a little bit worse. So people end up putting it close to them on camera. And then you're like, what the fuck? You know, why, did, why, did, why don't you just get a TLM 103 at that point? I know how the HD 800 sounds. I demoed them. They were horrible. I'm just arguing the aspect of soundstage. It, it's funny. People make a lot of jokes about, like, what music sounds good on the HD800S and, and they have like a list of zero songs. 
I see yeah, it's portable deck. It's a portable DAC amp topping makes it. I'm looking at getting an SSL2 plus interface. But for portable phone use, I use topping. I, I don't know how good the SSL2 plus uh, headphone jack is. I know it has a good preamp for microphones, especially dynamic microphones, because it has low self noise and a lot of gain. But the Motu may actually have a better headphone jack, I believe. I have to look into that. So, I mean, if you, if you plan on buying a, a microphone, especially like an SM7B or an RE20, yeah, you'd probably be better off with the SSL2 over a Motu. Because the Motu has a, li a little bit less gain and higher self noise. So the Motu is good with condensers and headphones. The SSL2 is mainly good at micro, you know, dynamic microphones. I look into the Perception 100. Oh my god. It's almost a U87 for less than 10th. Oh, we got a we got an old subscriber there. I I said I I'm I was seriously like if I didn't move on from microphones, I'd probably have a third TL103. I'd I'd have a black one. Um currently I'm only using one TL103 cuz I I have so much shit on my desk now that I, I just don't have room for the stereo pair of TL 103s anymore. Like, if I get rid of some of this stuff on my desk, I can get the other TL 103 out, but I don't have room for it. So I'm, I'm currently, I'm not using stereo. One day you'll own a TL 103. That is so sad, one day. You, you know, you know it, the, the, the TL 103 is not that expensive. Like I'm looking at buying an iPad, and if you buy the iPad with the keyboard, it's it costs as much as a TL 103. Like if if you buy a MacBook Pro, it it costs way more than a TL 103. If you buy an iPhone Pro, like it costs as much as a TL 103. So I mean, if you're buying an iPhone, if you're buying an iPad, if you're buying a MacBook, I mean, you're in TL 103 territory. So, has this Stratocaster. I'd recommend trying Amplitube with it, free amp sim. Um, I like this, you know, I, I, I noticed this when I was looking up uh, guitars, that a lot of the older people, like, they don't, they don't like using effects on the guitars anymore. Like, they don't overdrive it, and, you know, they, 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 they want more of a clean sound the older they get. So, I mean, you can really, like, do crazy effects on a guitar and sound like crazy, you know, heavy metal and shit. But I kind of realized that to achieve that effect, they're, like, really, like, distorting the sound of the guitar to, to achieve that effect. And apparently the older you get, you, you know, you stop wanting to do that. And you just want, like, the clean sound of the guitar. So, um... I'm kind of in that state of mind of like where I don't want to just use a bunch of effects on it. Like it's kind of like I don't use any EQ on my microphone. You know, I'm not tr I'm not trying to sound like I'm on the radio. It's kind of like the same effect like if you buy an amp for your guitar and then like you overdrive the living shit out of it and it sounds like heavy metal, like you're really fucking up the sound when to achieve that effect that sounds good. But like if you actually care about like the quality of the sound of the guitar, then you you don't use any effects. So, uh, like I'm kind of in that state of mind. So like, I kind of don't want to fuck with it so much that it sounds like I'm distorting the living shit out of it. Which is cool though. Like I mean, the heavy metal sound is pretty fucking insane. Like I haven't even dabbled with that. So. Uh, that I'll I'll definitely look into that eventually. Amp sims and amps in general, but currently I'm perfectly fine with the way that it sounds. Just plugging it into my audio interface, I think it sounds really good. Just connected to my audio interface, the clean sound of it. It's, it's very chimey. It's very bright, and I really like the sound of the the Stratocaster. 
Um, I, I haven't had a desire to actually dabble with simps, <laughs> amps or sims. I wish I had some simps to donate because we don't have any, nobody donated. The, the, how, is, how is this channel going to pay for all these thousands of dollars worth of garbage if nobody donates? Anybody who owns Biodynamic M21G. Oh god, is that, the, the, is that that stupid dynamic microphone or is that that stupid um, ribbon stage mic? You could try Fender Pro Junior Amp, Tube Amp, lovely clean tones, not too expensive. Yeah, so far, like, I... I like I may, uh, you know, so many people like they buy a camera and the, what are those things called LUTs? Like they get all these LUTs and they want to do all these color effects to their camera. Or if you buy a microphone and you just want to do all these effects on it, you know, tubes and, and EQ and, you know, crazy compression. I, I think it's the same with with guitars. There's people who want to fuck with it so much when it can sound just fine the way it is you know the 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 more i get into this stuff the less i i want to fuck with it like i want i want my camera to have a, a amazing color science and, and dynamic range out of the box i want my microphone to sound amazing out of the box I want my headphones to sound amazing out of the box. I don't want to be EQing my headphones. I don't want it to be running through a tube amp. And it's the same with get guitars. I, like I, I just noticed that like I would rather have everything sound good out of the box and, and not fuck with it. I've seen so many people go into those rabbit holes where they get all these LUTs and effects for their, their cameras, all, you know, all these crazy amps for their microphones and headphones. You know, and all the, the crazy guitar shit. And they could have just left it all alone and it would perform pretty good. So, I'm going to take a break. Because i got to go to the store to, to look at computer shit. <laughs>